So last week, we talked about shipping 1.0, we talked about string duplication, we talked about Webpack. Two weeks ago, we talked about workshops. Today, um, Larem, do you want to give an update on the workshop? You've been working on that with people, so maybe yeah, at some point you will be able to say something if you want, or say that there is some progress and share whatever progress you want to share with everyone. Does anyone have other demos? Hey Sebastian, this, this yeah, yeah, I, I can share that uh, with, the, with the community. Uh, we have uh, consolidated the five workshops. So uh, yes, if you can give that uh, opportunity, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so any other demos we need to talk about? We can talk about localization. We can talk about localization. What? Oh, we can show localization. Okay, okay. That's right. That's what you want. Demo? Um, I cannot show anything. But uh, Isham is trying to, is trying, trying to join. <coughs> okay, I, uh, is there? I think I. Yes, I need it. Good. Uh, yeah, so we can demo the localization work that a uh, few of us has worked on. Have worked on. Uh, we can also talk about it. Uh, so demo localization and also a data annotation uh, that uh, Isham has been working on. Also, we want one. So we'll see that. Um, and data annotations, that's good stuff. I, I, we, yeah, and we, we worked on it also um, during last triage, and mm -hmm. uh, and we tried it on treyorchardproject.net, and it's actually a great experience. Uh, so let's see. Um, if you have anything else, topics, anything, just interrupt me and let's talk about it. Um, if you don't have a mic, just write it in the chat and someone with a mic will raise the issue. So um, we are the 24th, which means 17 of March, which means this one, or not the one, moved condition of content type null in a try catch statement to under the case. It's very important to under the case. That's why Linus Torvalds wants small commit messages because otherwise they don't fit in the screens. Uh, the case, the content item was destroyed. Okay. Uh, was destroyed. So if a content item is destroyed, then the index could be broken. And there could be an exception. So he's uh, handling that. Uh, Orchard core, the 17th is here. Um, Seth, uh, Azure container name must be lowercase. Uh, so comment to make sure that the content last name. Month, Sebastian. That's what? Last oh, month. that's last month. Oh yeah, I'm like, uh, why is that? Okay, then for 17th here. Uh, bump echo. So the, yeah, we talked about it last week, the bot that did that thing. And then the two PRs uh, Antoine mentioned. Then fix I email address validator regression bug. Regression bug. Now I think there were, yeah, there were a few changes we asked on the thing to not inject any service in a view model. But for everyone wondering, when we're in a view model and you want to validate something, so implement I validatable object, and you need a service, on the validate method, you just resolve the service that you need. Okay. Otherwise, we can't use the, the view model directly in the views, for instance, to break stuff. I think so, it will break stuff. Well, it breaks sometimes, so just resolve it during the validate method. Um, Update.net net uppercase, core SDK to 31200. And we mentioned that it doesn't matter at all. It won't change anything in our case. Uh, unused options in shell settings manager. So removing this service, which is not used. 
prevent anonymous users performing get on content item API. I think it was someone from a big, maybe Gabor or Mark that raised the issue that um, we need a different permission for API calls on content items because sometimes you want to give users anonymous like, example was uh, you want anonymous users to be able to to view your site to view a page a content item and it will just show what the layout is or the view is or the template of this content item is uh, exposing but you might not want anonymous user to retrieve the full content item json payload because it might show some properties and metadata that you don't want to expose so now um, there is a custom permission um, that is called get api content so there is a view content preview content and now get api content that you can assign to specific roles and that is not assigned to anonymous by default to uh, get so administrator has it but anonymous should not have it you see it doesn't have it was not added for anonymous authenticated has been added um, which I don't think is correct. At least contributor edit, uh, editor should be added, but I don't think that API content should be added to authenticate it. Like anyone who has an account might not be able to get API content. Well, right now they can view the content. They can't edit, so they can't see anything else. Uh, I don't know. Let's, you can chat, if you comment in the chat or find an issue if you think um, we should not have it by default. So that's the change, but a good change from Carl. So Carl took on him to implement that. Tenant workflows, disable and enable tasks. So finally, we merged this PR uh, reviewed by Jean Thierry from Antoine to have workflow activities task to create disable enable setup tenants so all tenant management as workflow events can be useful to automate uh, tenant creation or disabling and things like this from forms for instance or external triggers could be super useful uh, update packages and dependencies and fix vulnerability using the wonderful npm update command to find all the missing or the updated packages. Move manifest attributes to specific files. Um, Antoine fixed some file names, so some classes, some class names were not matching the file names, so this is fixed now. GraphQL set display text to nullable. Set display text to nullable. Because sometimes you don't have a display text um, or a value on the display text and that caused issues with GraphQL. OK. So I assume everything else is mandatory, looks like so. Um, okay, so it can be, does it mean also it can be null actually in database and that's why it's null in the property. That yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um, toggle all widgets, so um, I thought it was already merged, uh, but uh, so there is a new icon in the divider of or maybe you just added that to flows and it was something else before i don't know so in flows now uh, no i think that's the first one there is a divider which with a new icon to expand collapse everything every widgets of the flow update font awesome update code mirror a lot of resources every time, but it's okay. Update resource manifest for font awesome. P 
because why do we with the first commit it's always to make it into commits <laughs> happens um, then update health checks docs for core 3.1 what's the update oh removing the version interesting okay so we get the latest one good change doc five icon that's funny because i saw that when you but well i saw that at the same time i don't know if it's conflicting with your new pr on the new uh, material doc because when i went on the site the icon was um, white but it doesn't look good on the gray the default gray of chrome or edge you can barely see that so i don't know what which one is valid yeah that doesn't work that's what i mean so now it's that i don't know what it was before but if you look at the docs it was dark okay but look at that now you see oh you saw that updating it was blue now there, there is it's like on my screen i almost don't don't see anything because there is not enough contrast mm -hmm. okay just saying so you see that but i don't well you see that i don't know what you see but i can't see anything it's maybe I see some white here, but for me, there is no, no icon. It's not, it doesn't work. My uh, browser has a dark, uh, dark I And I was about to say, if it's dark and then you have a dark browser, then you won't see it. So I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Green, blue, blue like the box. Yes. And yeah, you can't have param parameterized icons, right? You can't say, I don't know what, what you can do to be common to anything or you need a, an outline so it's not transparent out you know that there is some background of a specific color and then like if it was uh, black and not transparent that will work on the background whatever so i saw that last last time i looked at your update on material i was wondering if it was because of the update or no that's this one yes um, so did the change was the change because it has to be an ICO file or because you wanted to change the icon itself to be like this? Because you were on the dark screen. I wanted it to be white because oh, okay. I have dark the dark screen. Yeah, so you broke everyone. That's mm -hmm. so selfish. <laughs> um, so add culture picker to set a page. So we'll see that uh, how it works. And I think this change will have to be removed, Dean, because you're here and you suggested to change this file also. But in the meantime, so it has been changed in the PR, but in the meantime, the app settings from the web app hasn't been changed, has been reverted. And instead, the value for default is here. So we don't need this change anymore. So someone should revert this change. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, That's what we commented on the PR, but just waiting for someone to do it because I'm too lazy. Oh, wait. Why do we have that? I thought we, I didn't see that we still had that. So I don't think we should have it there then in this case. So if we don't say anything, we should use the one in the startup. Okay. But if we set something, then we should use what's set here. And I think that's what the code is doing here. You see supported culture? Here it's saying supported cultures equals either that or what we already have. At the same time, it's a null operator, which means maybe it won't be null, like an empty array. So I don't understand this code then I don't understand why this is necessary because I would agree to have that in the code by default and that's fine. This way we get it also for the templates without having to change anything. But I think this logic is wrong. It should check if the array is not null and has values. If it has values, then we should take it. If not, then we should take the default, which is all the culture. So this has to be changed and then we can so move it from but for that configuration for when it is now, um, or yeah, what happens by default, but that's not quite the right way to do it. Okay, good. So it works, but not as intended. 
So some more than we'll change that. Um, database and Azure Blob Shelves configuration. So it has been merged. It has been merged. Big change uh, for the stateless uh, support, meaning we can scale out without any issues. So the idea is that, but Dean, okay, I will do, I won't say anything. So Dean will talk because he has a microphone. Sure. So the issue was that um, the tenants JSON file and the app settings for each tenant are stored in the app data folder by default. Um, so John three and me wrote this one. Um, I did an Azure blob configuration for it and John three has done a database configuration. Um, so now you can install your tenants JSON and your app settings for all your tenants in either Azure on blob storage or within the database of whatever database you configure in the app settings for it. Um, so it's not necessarily the default tenant, but that would be a logical place to put it. What's the um, configuration story? If I do a setup today, it will still use the file system. By default, it will still use the file system. The configuration story is that um, when you call services.addOrchardCore, you put on the end of that dot add uh, as a blob shell configuration or dot add database shell configuration. Um, the reason we do it there rather than through a feature is because the shell settings are actually stored at kind of the application host level. Um, so they happen before a module activates. Um, so it's an additional configuration. It's a little bit like calling um, use add data protection dot add Azure data protection. That kind of concept. Um, and then in your app settings, there's um, in the app settings there we've got a couple of defaults for how you configure it. Um, so you either put it, you put a database provider in. Um, Very bad example. It's using a file system based example to configure that. That works, but I mean there is no point in doing that. Isn't it true? It's very it's true. <laughs> but at least if you uncomment it, it will work, which is good. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so we also have an option in there um, to migrate from files. Um, so when you have that enabled, it will, if it doesn't find anything in the database related to that tenant, it will look on the app data file system to see if there is a JSON file for it. And if it does, it will read it and put it into the database or copy it onto blob storage. OK. Um, and what else is there to know about it? Um, so what you can do, what I have done and tested with it is if you set up um, one host um, through like one executable of Orchard um, and put it, all your uh, app settings into the shells, you can start another host oh, and then add data protection to Azure so your keys are the same. Um, you can then start another host with the settings in here and you won't run through the setup screen at all. It would read good. the configuration directly from Azure. That's how we test it and that's, yeah, that's good. Um, the only thing with the Azure one um, is that um, you have to add a reference to the NuGet package directly um, because there was no logical place for us to reference that um, because it has dependencies on Azure and we didn't want to put that into the infrastructure project. If okay, that makes yeah. sense. What did you do? So you see the comment there, it says add a reference to the Orchard Core.shells NuGet package. OK, I think I understand what you mean, but let me see. Um, add reference to Orchard Core shells, Azure. OK, new get package. OK, Orchard Core shells, Azure, new get package. So why, why did you decide to do that? Um, we couldn't find a, a good way to reference it from application.core.targets because um, that just references modules 
it doesn't reference any of the just the basic orchard core projects um, and we didn't want to add it to the infrastructure project because it took dependencies on the orchard core blob storage projects um, we could it, that's definitely an option um, there's probably something I was going to talk to you about that's okay because that's an advanced scenario like you want to go distributed so this is how you make it distributed you need to configure where you want to store the list of tenants because we need to bootstrap it because before loading the tenants we need to load this list of tenants and if they are in the different store that you have to do that so because you already have an extra step to do it's not magic or configuration sits well or a screen somewhere I assume that's fine because you have to do add Azure shell configuration. You need to know about that. And wherever it's written that you have to do that, we should also tell them to do that. So I think that's OK. Um, yeah, it seemed logical to me because when you add blob storage to data protection or something, you reference another NuGet package to do so. Another so. option would be to say that you could say I don't know if it is doable that if there is the section, like we could make this because it's in the host, we could make it always there. Uh, it's not modular sensible than in this case. Yeah. Meaning, meaning if we want a third, yeah, it's it will be hard coded. So okay. So you have to be opt-in. It can't be hard coded. We can't detect, oh, he has the this option, so we should do that. And we already have the reference, so it's like magic. Nah. Uh, OK, so yeah, you have to do add Azure Shells configuration, add database Shells configuration. Um, yeah, that makes sense. But I could not find any MD file. <laughs> no, there'll be an MD file coming. Eventually. You know, docs always come later. OK. Even a minimalistic one would be good, mentioning whatever Kubernetes, Azure, scale out, whatever. Um, and I'm sure Michael we want to try that. OK, good job. Thank you. And thanks to John Thierry also for doing that. Um, next step in terms of cloud support, stateless stuff, is the PR that uh, John Thierry has been working on with um, distributed caching, which is a multi tiered cache, actually. Like there is. It's, it's a way to store documents in database, well, to retrieve documents from the database in an immutable and in a mutable way. So when you load it, you say if you want to mutate the state or not, and it will also cache it in a distributed cache if, the, if an implementation is available, and also cache it locally in memory cache, uh, which means it's multi-tier level caching. Um, so he's making it so that um, a cache of a document like like um, content type definitions, for instance, or holes, the, we, we, sh we cache these documents. They will be cached in the distributed cache implementation. So if you are in a distributed system, then everyone will share the same document. But there will be also local cache on every instance in memory. And then a way for us to detect that uh, the document has changed by pinging the distributed cache with a version hash. So before reading from memory, we ask the distributed cache, what's the version of the document you have? And if the versions don't match, then we need, oh, then we need to load from the distributed cache or to load from the database if it's not in the distributed cache. So uh, jean we did that. It's very good uh, and it should be merged uh, soon. I had a meeting with him last week about that. Two meetings, actually, so he's making progress. And then it should be, it should be 
fully um, uh, so distributing the, the Rothschild core instance will be fully fully managed, so that will be supported completely um, in a scale out manner, and every tenant will be duplicated on every um, node because now the shell settings are stored in a shared environment, so that's good. The next step after that will be the best thing ever, which is uh, being able to configure some strategies on where, on, 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 on which nodes you want to host the tenants. Like if you have 10 tenants maybe and two nodes, maybe you want five and five or nine and five, like one tenant could be on two different nodes, but another one could be on a single node. So you can, you, you will be able to configure some strategies, so they are pluggable, to be able to distribute the tenants on different nodes. And then we will have a, a way to load balance uh, or to balance the request to the correct instance, uh, like Kubernetes will do for any services, but we will be able to do it at the tenants level and we will also be able to uh, unload and reload uh, lazily every tenant on every node as, as necessary. So we could also define some strategies to say if a tenant hasn't been accessed for 10 minutes, just unload it on one machine and maybe it's still alive on another one. But everything being configured by different strategy that we will be able to set up. So that's then the next step after uh, Chantier's PR. Then uh, make iFeature event under async. Okay, and updating all the colors to be async. Job. Um, clean admin control of admin controller of email. Of email. So what's the reason here? ISMTP service send message. I'm wondering why that has been removed. I think the model site was duplicated. There was um, two if blocks for it, so. Okay. Then add missing tenant permission, check in admin. Uh, missing tenant permission, check in admin. Was it this morning? Maybe because uh, Antoine found it yesterday. The idea is that we need to check the permission when we list the tenants on the admin because there is a permission. Good job. Uh, add data annotation default your messages. And this is about talking uh, about localization. So, so this one is because you might remember there is an issue um, file that the data annotation attributes are not localized correctly because the actual strings to be localized are taken from resources or are coded in the data annotation classes. And um, in this case, we don't have them in the PO file, so they can't be translated because the PO extractor doesn't find them. So to solve that, um, there are one PR from Antoine, which is actually not using data annotation, and another one, uh, and which is a mitigation, and this one, uh, which uh, what it does is it's just defining all the strings that are in currently in the ResX files of ASP.NET, but as a custom class with calls to the string localizer, and this way the PO file extractor can find them and we can then localize them in crowding and provide PO files for that. Okay, first, so now it's discovered. Uh, the second step uh, being to actually use them and ensure it works, but also be able to extract custom messages that you will put in the data annotation because in a data annotation like um, email required or email or required, sorry, 
then you might say email, but provide a custom string. And in this case of the custom string, we still need to extract it. I don't know what state we are on this one, but at least the default messages that are nowhere in the code should uh, be registered somewhere like this. So we can have um, a reference list of things to translate and then the localizer will be able to pick the correct translation. So that's a good first step. Um, Antoine and Isham are working on that. Okay, good job. Um, about localization, so um, demo. Um, that one, and I want to show this one, and I think it's up to date. Let me see. We did that. Um, now it's merged, so we should be able. So this is a setup culture picker. So if I go on the dev branch. Good, and I run it. So I will reload the solution and start the application. In the meantime, we'll ask uh, Larem to give an update on the workshop he's been talking about two weeks ago. Okay, uh, Sebastian, do you want me to share my screen, the, the PowerPoint? Or? Oh, sure. If you want to share anything that you can share, oh, then please okay. share. Yeah. Let me uh, let, let me do that now. So apparently you have something to share. I didn't know, so I just... <laughs> there you go. Can, can you see it? Yes, perfect. Okay, so think, uh, uh, thanks to, uh, to Dean, Gabor and Bertrand for spending time uh, last week and this week just to put this together. So these are the five proposed workshops we have uh, come up so far. Uh, and and uh, there's and this, this is the you. summary. Go ahead. Because you're talking about something like everyone knows about that. And on, honestly, if I'm someone who was not looking at the, the, the project you are uh, managing, I will not know what you are talking about. Two weeks ago, you asked, how can we get training and do workshops and everything? And I said, well, I can't help you, but I can help you by just letting you talk about it and try to drive it and it's fine. So you started working on that. And the goal being apparently to create actual workshops. So you want to create actual workshops that people will be able to take. That's correct, that's correct. Yeah, so, so thanks for the intro for, 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 for reading one text, uh, Sebastian. So yes, uh, I, I was hoping to put uh, together some workshops for, and the goal is to jumpstart the skills, uh, the Orchard core skills, you know, for, I was thinking of myself maybe, you know, or some people there who are not uh, too good uh, with Orchard, but who want to learn it. So just uh, because the, the the learning curve is a bit steep just to jump start the skills so i was thinking maybe we can put together some workshops so you're right i, I asked for for how to do this so i put i i spoke with and bertrand and these are the the, the five uh, workshops in summary that we have uh, put together and can, can can you see the slide yeah okay so um, the, the, there's the the first one is about uh, how to deploy it. Uh, the second one is theming. The third one is using uh, the admin uh, of uh, of Orchard Core. The the fourth one is develop is module development, and the fifth one is the Orchard uh, commerce module. So, uh, in in the slides, this PowerPoint slides the the the, the 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 succeeding slides would have the details actually if if you want to go through it, but but it's going to be a paid workshop and 
uh, the, the payment would go straight to the instructor. So in this case, either to Dean, Gabor, or Bertrand. And, and we have some proposed dates here. Uh, for example, for workshops one and two, we're thinking of uh, April 4 and April 11th. So these are two succeeding Saturdays. And then some proposed times. Uh, in this case, for uh, workshops one and two, it's from uh, 10 a.m. through uh, 5 p.m. London time. And then some some fees. I think uh, for both uh, for for the three uh, for the three instructors, they have uh, agreed to just maintain the same. So it's a hundred bucks per person, uh, uh, seventy five per OC contributor, and and most of them uh, have said that uh, minimum of five, maximum of ten attendees, and uh, and and the fee is uh, paid straight to uh, to whoever is the instructor. So for Dean Gabor and uh, Bertrand for now. And, and any questions so far? Um, I have some question. Um, will there be a website common to everything? Because it seems like it's a common effort from organized by you to do something like that could deserve a website listing all the available workshops, the presenters, the events date and people could register maybe. Uh, Lombic is definitely greatly imp implicated here, uh, uh, but I mean, Dean and Bertrand are also independent on that, so maybe a common website would, would be helpful, even static, I don't know, or, or even bright or whatever would help organizing and listing this thing. Or do we need a page on or link on our website to point to that? We can do that also. OK, so 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 that is the thing that I have been grappling with in terms of how do we uh, uh, communicate to the community the availability of the workshops. And the second one was to how do they sign up uh, in terms of, hey, I want to attend and I want to pay. So so those are the two things that are uh, that uh, in fact, I would like to get some 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 suggestions because what I was thinking was that um, as a start, those who want to sign up, uh, okay, as a start, maybe uh, I, I uh, if you allow, I can uh, 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 say in Gitter that there's the workshops avail uh, available here, and, and here's the PowerPoint, so you can look at what, what you want to do, and I'll give my email address if you want to sign up, uh, so that uh, they that's can good. sign up. Start simple, yeah, that's good. Yes, so just... start simple, exactly. If it works and there is a lot of demand, then okay, let's try to organize it better. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then also for for both uh, Gabor and Bertrand, they, they also want to get some some feedback in terms of uh, well, I'm sure for Dean too, uh, the interest level. You know, how, how are they interested in that? And then also, if if I may, if I may request, uh, I don't know if if there's a space in the orchard uh, orchard uh, project project.net website to to put some information about this one so uh, i don't know if that's possible do you think that's possible no we, we can make a page with partners and and things like this yeah training uh, resources to point to that yeah okay so wh who do i need to coordinate with because i'm sure the person would want to format the whatever format the the content so i can i can format in whatever format he wants. So who do you want me to talk to with, with regards to that? To have an access to our website, it's currently no. Antoine and I. Oh, no, no, to, to add, okay, to, to post the content. So I'll, I'll talk to Anton to coordinate what kind of content he wants posted, the format, you know, think sometimes something like that. Yeah, when I mean access, I mean, yes, I mean, we, we, we can add a page. You don't have to do it by yourself. We, we can see where it should be. Oh, okay, okay. So, so 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 far th th this is this is what we have come up so far five workshops uh with with some i'm not too sure what 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 you all guys think about the the hundred dollar uh, fee uh, i i think it's very reasonable i'm not too sure but what what do you guys think do i have to pay H have you made <laughs> contributions to what you call sebastian i'm not sure <laughs> uh, not not in the last one I just comment and, and match PRs. 
I just criticize. That's what I do. Uh -huh. uh, is it based on uh, your revenue? Like someone poor would not pay and someone rich would pay more? Um, okay, no, that's good. Uh, I like it. It needs to be sustainable for the for the teacher, and it needs to be affordable for the attendees. It needs to be not too many people, so you can have uh, um, a good communication with the teacher. And uh, no, that's good. I like it. I think okay. we talked about not being recorded because it's a paid event and it's personalized and. There is also content that is done by the teacher, lots of work, so they need to work on that. And that's OK. Uh, <clears throat> doesn't seem expensive to me. Like a day of training for 100 bucks is super cheap. Uh, so it's a very good investment for any of the sessions I see here. I assume that people might have also some suggestions about topics, maybe, because you and, and the people here define some topics based on each of their uh, specialties, but maybe people want like to open up some more topics and maybe they should suggest it to you. Um, yeah, I assume you get free attendance yeah. to these to these workshops also because you organize it. I hope so. Well, you have to. No, do, no, you no, have to. no, 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 I, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. No, 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 I'll pay, you know. Uh, in fact, I told Dean, I'm the first, uh, I will be the first uh, uh, sign up for the first two. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Dean, I, I just thought that maybe uh, we might have to move April 4 and April 11 uh, a week. So maybe we might start April 11 and April 18, though. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's still okay with you. Yeah, no, doing it a little bit later is fine. And, um, you know, there is an argument for waiting until. Um, we've released version one um, to do it after that as well, but um, you know I know people are after these things now, so you know I'm not going anywhere. Obviously, I'm I'm stuck inside. <laughs> we can do something. Oh yeah. Uh, well, um, would, would you like to uh, definitely start up? Sorry, Liv, uh, Lauren. Do you want to show through some of the slides you've got of um, of what you're actually suggesting as as being taught, so people can see what it's about and um sure 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 uh, that's about some brief like and go through each slide each of the workshop yep go on you have five minutes oh, okay very have, briefly uh, at 1 p.m five minutes gotcha okay so workshop one is uh deploying or chart the the workshop core uh website in azure okay so the the, the goal here is to go through some stuff uh, very, very basic so and then the end goal is that to be able to deploy to uh, Azure uh, your 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 OC website and it will enable the tenants, enable Azure data protection, uh, do pipelines, DevOps. We will use a SQL Server. We'll enable uh, the blob storage with tenants. We'll do uh, discuss media caching, uh, image sharp. You know uh, how to uh, add new image sizes. Uh, enable CDN. Enable email. Uh, sitemap and so what we what 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 we'll ask is for the attendees to be able to make sure they have uh, Azure accounts and also email accounts so we can just plug it in and, and the, the it will uh, move uh, uh, efficiently we hope okay so for the second one it's um, theming specifically for theming uh, uh, the, we will discuss the the current themes how it works and then we'll use the blog theme as a base theme. So we'll make a content type, bug part, uh, liquid templates uh, uh, will be a focus here. Um, shapes, enable search and search shapes, is losing queries. Um, and then uh, enable feedback submission form workflows. OK. Uh, so for, for Dean, uh, these are some of the, the, the logistics he wants. OK, so we, we know, know that. Portion of three, this is going to be Gabor. And, and really the focus is using uh, how to use the admin UI for stuff like uh, uh, using uh, recipes, uh, content uh, for recipes, uh, 
open ID, deployment plans. So really how to maximize the, the admin UI. Uh, the fourth workshop is really module development. Now here, the, 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 the objective is to be able to create a module, a to-do list module so that you can, um, from code, so it's not from, from, from the UI. Um, so, and the focus here, uh, Gabor was saying, is uh, racer tags, uh, racer tags and some, uh, some SQL queries, because uh, whereas Dean will focus on liquid, uh, uh, loosing queries and liquid templates, uh, Gabor would want to focus on the uh, racer templates. And then for, for the fifth workshop, it's a uh, relief. Uh, this, the, the content has to be discussed because Beltrat was saying that uh, uh, we'll wait uh, for, for a few more months before we can really finalize the content. So the content is to be discussed, but this will be taught by, by the father of Orchard, the Orchard himself, Bertard. So in a snapshot, those are the, 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 the five workshops we've covered. Any questions, feedback? All good. Thanks a lot. So I assume you will communicate on Gitter at least to show the. the I will. Uh, Lombic will also, I'm sure, uh, advertise it because they have some. Okay. Uh, some content here, uh, and we'll see together also with Antoine how we can change the website to point to that, um, and then we'll get updates as we need updates and as it. Um, is actually given and we'll see what people have to say about it. That's great. Good job, uh, Laren. Thanks a lot for doing that. Thank you. Um, so sharing my screen back because my site is ready. So when you have the latest dev, you have this new setup and the new thing is that stuff at the top right. Um, change language. Note that change language string has not been localized yet or has not been integrated in Orchard yet. So when we, so the default behavior is that it will show up using whatever language has been selected, which is by default the one from your browser, uh, or if there is no match from your system. But here there is a match because my browser is support is supposed to ask for English, but I can switch and say, oh, I want actually. French, okay, because that's much better. Um, and and um, that won't configure the site in the same language because it's just a setup experience. It will still take the 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 what the nothing. It won't enable localization on the server side. Then you will configure which language you want to support as content localization on server side. Um, but you can see that because we already have lots of languages supported and translated, uh, the UI will adapt automatically. And if you take a language um, like Arabic that will be uh, right to left, not only do you get the strings, but it's also going right to left. Okay, because of all the good stuff that uh, Isham and Co have done, well, Isham, Co, Isham and Co have done um, on the right to left support CSS. Uh, so this one, even if you take Persian, you will also get it left, uh, right to left. So that's super nice. Uh, all these languages that work, I think that's Russian uh, and beautiful. Some strings have not been translated to be done, but that's great. Love this, love this story here. Italian. Oh, we don't have Italian. So, so sad. What is it? Oh, there is some Japanese and Chinese. Um, this is not this one. This should be, where is Japanese? This should be Japanese, but we, oh, this is Chinese, Taiwan, and the other one. Okay. And Japanese. Isn't it beautiful? Don't have to install anything. It's there by default. It's awesome. Love it. Good job. Um, and by the way, I use also try.orchardcore.net to show localization. I just set up a dummy site. I enable the languages in the settings. I enable localization and the languages. 
and I can just switch and show that all the admin is also translated. It's beautiful, a beautiful demo to, to give without having to install anything. Just use tryorchardcore.net. And at some point also Antoine will update the site to get this setup experience also already um, there. Oh, but no, on tryorchardcore.net we don't need that because we don't have a setup screen like this. Um, maybe Antoine will want to do the same thing for the main Orchard Codonet page. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be super interesting. Yes. It would be a great demo, like a great first experience that people get their uh, own language in, in this window. That's awesome. So good job, everyone, who were um, with that thing. How do I remove that? I need to pick this thing. Zoom out. Any other questions, comments? All good. Um, new material theme that will be merged soon. I didn't see anything wrong about that apart from the icon, so feel free to fix it if you want. Oh, did you already fix the icon? <laughs> yeah, I just did. <laughs> <Do this. laughs> okay, beautiful. Uh, so yeah, you can merge it, I assume. I don't see the difference. So we'll have to show it next week when it's there. Yeah, it was it. to try the uh, version 5 of Material, um, the Material team of Ankedox, and one of the enhancements you are demonstrating it. If you change the page, it will stay. You will. You see that you don't lose the. It's a spa run. Sorry, what? It's a spa application. Mm, yeah. Yes. It's called instant loading. Okay, good job. Soon in, uh, in release candidate, the material uh, version, the five fifth, fifth version. Good, thank you. All done on time. Um, thanks everyone. See you on Thursday at the same time. But next week, apparently, uh, in Europe, you will have to go later by one hour, like it used to be. Okay, it will be 9 p.m. in France and in Central Europe. No, that's not. Right, then I will be on time. Yeah, you will be on time, Sipke. But you were early for the wrong time also, so that's weird. <laughs> See you next week. Bye bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.